Okay, the last batch of questions here, number 36. Who do you think shot the plane down? No idea, really. Um, many of us in the country suspected the extremist who started, uh, who planned and executed the genocide had a hand in that. It uh, just seemed um, strange to us that that they were ready to roll, boom, as soon as the plane was shot down, roadblocks were set up within an hour, and um, um, they went and killed the prime minister. So you're like, if you want to take over the country and, and, and uh, you know, things are standing in your way, like a president, prime minister, nobody, nobody questions that it was the extremist who, who killed the prime minister. I think there can be a strong case made for the extremist shooting the plane down, but... There's no forensic evidence. There's, I mean, that I know of, or that seems to have come out that I know of. It's, it's strange to me that with the French citizens who were in that plane, the pilot, co-pilot, navigator, that France didn't go in right away and do a, a forensic analysis and figure out and give a, somehow a report on that. But um, yeah, don't know. What emotions did you feel when talking to the Hutu prime minister? Um, I was really afraid for the orphans. I was thinking, are we too late? This is desperate. Is this going to even make any difference? Some people have wondered if I was afraid for myself. I wasn't fearful. It wasn't like he appeared threatening at all to me. But um, to those to those students, it was great. I mean, those young people at the orphanage, great anxiety. Great anxiety. What was the transition out of Rwanda like for you? Number 38, the last question. The transition out. Um, I was really worn down, worn down and tired, emotionally especially. Um, I'd been involved for a year and a half after the genocide in the rebuilding process, and I just kind of felt like uh, I needed to either go deeper in the culture, to learn Kinyarwanda, take my family, move into a more rural setting, work more closely with people at the grassroots, or maybe it was time for our kids to experience some of their own country's culture and, 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 and be able to form those bonds of identity and stuff with their own country. And um, so, uh, yeah, Teresa and I made the decision to come back. Um, I think our kids would have been somewhere around the age of 13, 10, and 8. And, um, yeah, I was, I was really, really, really tired. Um, moving back to Oregon made the transition, I think, as good as possible. It was a wonderful place, a rural place in Oregon, wonderful people. Joined the local fire department, great people there in the fire department. The high school community that we became a part of was just um, really, really uh, enjoyable group of people to work with, the little school our kids went to. So the transition back was, um, I look back on it, and I think it was the right thing to do. Well. Thank you guys again for asking these questions, giving me a chance to talk to you. And um, if you do have further questions, don't hesitate. Send me a message on Facebook um, and, uh, uh, or my email, carl.wilkins at yahoo.com. Happy to do what I can to uh, respond or partner on some events, help people put on these glasses of respect, empathy, and inclusion to, uh, to be more intentional about the way we we treat others and about the way we think about ourselves. So thanks. And thanks, Jim. All your work. You're awesome. Take care. See you now.